Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another DIY project. And it's actually quite nicely made. Look at those wrapping text sheets. I guess this is a um, dual power supply. And you just simply just set the voltage uh, using the knob. And those are really nice and sexy knobs, so I kind of really like this. You you should be able to set the voltage, what, plus minus, even down to the zero point something. So this is 11, and this is 10. And uh, he sprayed some nicely spray varnish, so so the text is gonna stay there. I don't know if this is on or off. Normally, down will be on, right? And I guess this one is grounded, and then it's on for the outputs. I would then assume this one is also on when it's up, right? Otherwise, I would be confused. But it's everything is nice and beautiful straight and yeah got a few screws here in the bottom and the case is quite all right i can't remember the there's a special brand name for those cases i've seen them a million times this is also a powder coated uh steel i think actually both parts here that that will be steel let me try with a magnet. No! The bottom is aluminum, yeah. The sides that will be... What? That is also not magnetic. I did not expect that. So the side is also aluminum. Really? Okay, that is a surprise I did not see happening. I did not see that coming, so it's stainless. Wow. Let's measure and let's turn it on and measure if this works. Can't wait to see how many amps it can do, but I don't see any heat sinks, so I would have loved a little label about how many watts or how many amps or something. Or at least on the back a little secret info, but other than that it's neatly made let's power it up so i think we're ready mains is applied four watts of idle there is a little bit of light left in this led wow oh it is this deep deep red so this tells me this unit is very old. Also the, the brightness of the LED. But look at that. Oh yeah, okay. Let's just try and put this where the knob says. Is this what you would call? Oh, let's have a look. Let's get some more light. There's an annoying shadow. I think this is about as accurate as I can do it, right? <laughs> I think this guy is not an amateur. Uh, well, I kind of know that, so. Uh huh. Let's see if. Was it only luck? Oh, look at that. So I'm measuring from this one's. Oh, did I, did I, did I, did I touch? Okay, so I think this is on, and now I measure zero. So between those two, so that means they're completely floating. Let's just go back here and see. Yes, the 10 volts. They'll be back and we don't touch the button. Yes, completely floating. Well, that is great. No leak, no nothing. And this one, I didn't touch anything. I didn't adjust for... I think this guy adjusted 
the knobs for 10 volts because this it can't be that it can't be that good can it is that possible so let's have a look when we have Is this okay? Or is this a tiny, tiny, tiny bit over? Okay. Yeah, now it's a little bit under. Ooh. -hoo. Let's try this. 15. Okay. So he used 10 volts for reference. But anyway, let's try and load it a little bit. But maybe I should take off the lid before I load it. There's no need to blow this up because it's really nice. This is definitely one of those we are not going to screw up. So yeah, I think it's teardown time. So I just took off the lid and I've been sitting here and yelling and screaming for a few minutes. It is absolutely beautiful. Wow, look at everything here inside this power supply. It is just amazing. I am a little bit impressed. Somebody made this 50 years ago or something like that. Look at the date codes, 74, so it's almost 50 years ago. But I think, is this the date code of the transistors, the, the 8027? Maybe it is, really. I am a little bit unsure about that. And sometimes we can find a date code on the capacitors, but not those. Nope. So it's between 80 or 74 is my guess. So... 40 years old at least. Don't you just love this? So this was not an output switch. It was the series switch between the two outputs. So this will DC short, as you can see. The black one here is then connected to the red one here. And then you go in series. So let's see how that turns out. There's still 10 volts, 10 and 10, right? So nothing here. And then I get 20 because now they're in series. And this is now my zero. I got minus 10 and plus 10. Super, super convenient. So this is the the way that it works. I will take away my protective earth. I will show you a, something funny here. Let's go in AC. So there's, of course, no ribble. Okay, dokie. Now we're measuring to the chassis. So this one is 25 to chassis. Hey, uh, let's look at the other one. Oops. So that is when they're individual, the two outputs. 45 volts of AC between the two. What if I put them in serious mode? Now there's no AC, because now they're connected together via this switch, and now there's no AC. But when they're open, 45 volts of AC. What if I take my earth connection and put it to the chassis? Nope, it is not affecting the AC between the outputs. So why is this happening? Well, I think the two individual power supplies, there is um, an AC, kind of like a capacitive coupling in the two transformers. And this is running uh, opposite phase. 
So all you have to do is just swap those two wires to one of them, and then it will probably go away this problem. Let's try and see if this is true. Let's have a look. Power this thing up. And exactly the same happens. I swap the two wires here. So that is not the problem. So let's look at the mains. So the mains system is actually a little bit funny. Look at the way the two fuses are mounted. Just because it's super convenient the way that the two transformers can hold the fuses. And then try and imagine the way that the windings that they go on those two transformers, right? So this point here should be that point. But that is the opposite, right? So how about we try and connect this one to that one, that one to this one. And then let's see what happens. So let's try again. Didn't touch anything. All we did is connect the two transformers the way that I just mentioned. Now we're going to turn on power. And, oops, AC voltage is now gone. Only two volts, that is nothing. <laughs> that was the first problem, and this must have been driving the user nuts for a million years. It was that easy. <laughs> of course, we need the fuses again, but come on, there must be a better way to implement the fuses. But that was definitely a problem. Easy, easy to find and easy, easy to solve. Yeah, yeah. Look at the PCB design. It is hand milled. I totally love it. I would have done the same. And, and this is probably somebody who was quite young, who was doing this in his early ages of electronics. Because, I mean, this is definitely from the 70s or 80s. Wow. Yeah, I really love this design. And it is really made with a 723 and... A really nice transistor. We got the current sense. We, yeah, we got everything here. It's absolutely nice. How about we see uh, where's the current limit? So here we go with the 10 volts. Again, just one of the outputs. And uh, this is a half an amp. Let's just play with the current. And that is it, 540, see? And then we go back again, and then we're back. So this one is good for a half an amp, easy, easy. And let's try and enable and disable the output. It is just rock steady, but that is not a big surprise. The, this is, everything in here is made correctly. Uh, we got sense, uh, voltage sense, we got the feedback here, and it's just, this is just the way it is. Then you're going to get a rock steady uh, output. And uh, let's just see. This is AC. Uh, yeah. Full load, no load. Full load, no load. So there's no ripple either. Happy, happy. And now it's fixed. And ready to be used another 50 years. Oh, I forgot to mention one little detail here. I think it looks super, super sexy with the way that, that you can tie up wires and make it really nice and shiny. But, but I really don't want you to do that, actually. So... This is your voltage set point, super, super critical wires. And this goes via AC high current wires. Those wires here, that's the secondary side of the, of the transformer that goes to rectifier diodes. So that means here we have huge amounts of ripple current. In fact, uh, the peak current in this wire is like 10 times higher and your output powers, powers uh, current, so if this is a half an amp, you could actually have like five amps in short, short 
pulses going in this wire and also in the green one and that will of course affect the critical set point of your voltages so, so just don't do that and primary wires away from secondary wires and secondary wires carries AC currents away from any DC critical wires I see this done in equipment all over again and again but when you want to go for the last millivolt of noise and ripple this is definitely not what I want you to do so now I'm done and now I'm super happy and to add a little bit of Dumo stickers because I don't want to forget what kind of load this can do but I'm super happy about it really that was a nice DIY project I'm really happy that I got that one.